Okay, last month, CNN ran with a bombshell of a story. Sources with knowledge tell myself and Carl that Michael Cohen claims that then-candidate Donald Trump knew in advance about the June 2016 meeting in Trump Tower in which Russians were expected to offer his campaign dirt on Hillary Clinton. Crucially, these sources tell us that Cohen is willing to make that assertion to the special counsel, Robert Mueller. Why is Chris Cuomo's head so much bigger than the other two heads? <laughs> I don't know why I focus on that. Okay, well, the accompanying article on their website revealed that, quote, contacted by CNN, one of Cohen's attorneys, Lanny Davis, declined to comment. Huh. And just a week ago, Lanny Davis, Michael Cohen's attorney, doubled down again on CNN. I think... Um the reporting of this story got mixed up, and in the course of a criminal investigation, we were not the source of the story. Uh, okay, <laughs> little problem there. He was lying. Lanny Davis was actually the major source for the entire story. He was also the anonymous source that confirmed it to other outlets. Now, this week, he came clean, telling The Washington Post that he's not certain the claim is accurate and that he could not independently verify it. And yesterday, he tells BuzzFeed News that he regrets his whole role as an independent source in his subsequent denial of his involvement in the story. Okay, if you can follow that. Davis merely saying he, quote, made a mistake. But he actually didn't. Lanny Davis is an old Clinton fixer who has been spinning information and using the press to do his bidding for decades. Now, this was deliberate, and the folks at CNN were only too happy to join him in this misinformation charade. And why? Because they have a com common enemy. It's Donald J. Trump. So Davis floats a malicious and fallacious story to target a political adversary, and the media gleefully disseminate it. Now, CNN pseudo and Bernstein delighted in this tale of Trump's misdeeds because it fit the pathetic Russian narrative that they've been trying to substantiate for a year now. They used to call CNN, remember the Clinton News Network in the day? Well, with Lanny Davis as an unpaid contributor, it's more fitting than ever. Forget 1998, it's back. But this reminds me of the disgraced FBI director, Jim Comey. Now, we call him James Too Tall Comey. Okay, fine. Who plant, who's planted more stories than Martha Stewart has planted hydrangeas, okay? Comey passed his memos of classified conversations between himself and the president to a friend. Remember that memo to the file? And he did it for media consumption. I understood this to be my recollection recorded of my conversation with the president. As a private citizen, I felt free to share that. I thought it very important to get it out. So why didn't you give those to somebody yourself rather than give them through a third party? Because I was worried the media was camping at the end of my driveway at that point, and I was actually going out of town with my wife to hide, and I worried it would be like feeding seagulls at the beach. Oh, my God. I had forgotten he said that. So we're led to believe that he really doesn't like the press, call me, while he's throwing them life-sustaining chum, oh, to the seagulls. And remember these greatest hits from WikiLeaks Podesta inbox? CNBC's John Harwood sent emails to Hillary Clinton. Campaign chairman John Podesta shamelessly sucking up to him, offering campaign advice and praising the candidate. Well, he was with her while he was covering the campaign. Then there was Juliet Alprin of The Washington Post. She dropped Podesta a line to give him a heads up on a story she was going to publish, and she included a little preview. So helpful. And the New York Times unbiased Glenn Thrush, he put in an appearance as well. He wrote to Podesta a story in progress to make sure I'm not effing anything up, he said. Like Lanny Davis, Podesta was apparently kind of like a freelance editor for both The Washington Post and the New York Times. Now, these are just a few examples of collusion that we know about only thanks to WikiLeaks. But today we learn from Congressman Mark Meadows the danger of this kind of politicization of the media and partisan story planting. 
He tweeted in part, We've learned new information suggesting our suspicions are true. FBI, DOJ have previously leaked info to the press and then used those same press stories as a separate source to justify FISA, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Uh, and Meadows then spoke to America's newsroom following closed-door hearings with FBI officials. We know that some people at the Department of Justice and FBI actually gave information to the media, then the stories were reported, then they used those reports to justify further investigation. Now, it should be noted that the FBI tonight is pushing back hard on this story. A source clarified uh, the agent testified that the FBI routinely uses media material to corroborate their work product, including FISA materials, but, quote, never said directly that we utilize FBI leaks for FISAs. Boy, that was a carefully worded statement. You've got to really parse that one. But with partisans using the media to bait prosecutors or justify bogus investigations, don't we need to be more careful and ask more questions? I think America needs journalists that we can trust. But as it stands now, we not only have to worry about the objectivity of our news sources, we have to worry about their sources as well. And that's the angle.